Hey everyone, in this part two of our building gen series, we're going to look at how you can package all of your building elements and then construct and customize your own structure using that package. In the first part of this series, we assembled and organized all of the elements of our package, which we'll now aggregate. You'll find create package on the toolbar and also under the building gen plugin submenu. The first thing you want to do is give your package a name and then set the unit size. In iClone, a single grid length represents one meter. And here you can see a 2x2 two two grid, which we'll use as our default for now, as that was the size of the floor tiles we saved earlier in part 1. We're just going to set a default style called New Style here next, and then proceed to add in our elements, starting from the base 2x2 two two tile from the ground folder. Initially, you'll want to check off both Preferred and Include. This allows you to set the initial default values when dealing with numerous objects. You'll also want to set the appropriate type. In this case, it's a floor type. Next, ensure that you check off which floors this element can be defined as a floor. In this case, it's all of them. Let's bring in a wall element next. It's assigned a wall category by default, so we don't need to change it. In this case, we're only going to use this element on the first and second floors. I'll bring in another specific railing, which I'm only going to set for use on the top level wall, and then proceed to save the iBuilding config so we can test out how the simplest base package will construct a building. It will save to the iBuilding folder under Props, and double-clicking will bring up the new building panel. If we hit Build, it will give us a very simple two-floor structure with a base of two units, or six meters squared as we defined earlier. Note that the railing acts as the wall for the top floor here according to our settings as well. You can select and delete individual elements as you please. Ok, let's go back and reload our iBuilding config file so we can add to it. I'll load in a window element and define it as such for the first and middle floors, then add in another and set it as a corner element. We can overwrite our previous save and load it up again. This time, I'll select a couple of window position presets, and you'll see them appear on the respective sides of the building when we select Build. In this case, we get an error as the top floor railing we set as a wall won't be compatible with the size and position of the windows we have. Let's continue by adding in some door elements, starting with the door frame, which we naturally want to define as a door for the first level. When we bring in the actual door itself, we need to ensure that we have door frame selected and then drag our door element down to the child element section instead, also defining this as a door. Now here we want to click on the position settings icon and then preview to see the two combined. You'll see that the door element itself needs to be repositioned. We can also test out the rotation result, and you'll see the pivot is at the base corner that we defined earlier, which makes testing a lot easier. Previously, I dragged in the same element twice, but you can also simply use the copy-paste commands in the building gen packager window to duplicate an element as well. In this case, since we have a child element, it's a lot faster for us to do it this way with the door. I'll define the second one as a corner element, and then let's save and test out once again. Just like with Windows, you'll want to set your door positions using the relevant icons. Once you've hit Build, you can then test out the rotation of the door within its door frame. Finally, let's bring in a couple of pillars and define them as such. Naturally, we want the railing pillars to be set to the top floor where the railings will appear. We can then save and rebuild once again. We can now see the pillars and posts in their assigned positions. However, now you'll notice that there is a bit of mesh overlap, causing flickering when the camera is moved. This is due to the floor thickness not being set to an ideal value when combined with the other elements. To refine this, let's go back to our packager window and adjust the height value for all of our side elements, 
including walls, windows, and doors, to 280 from 250. Now when we do that and rebuild, you can see that the flickering issue is gone. You may also want to capture a thumbnail for your packager to make it easier to locate visually. To do so, simply get a camera view you like, then right click on the iBuilding config file in the content manager and select it from there. Okay, finally let's look at how we can modify our initial construction to align with something closer to what we have in the commercialization image. If you have something like an L-shaped building, you'll always want to start big and then manually delete unwanted sections after the initial build has been generated. You can use the middle mouse button to directly select various subnodes within the building and delete them manually. You can also use box select as well. To add in vertical elements such as walls or windows to empty floor tiles, simply select your desired floor tile and click the type and orientation of the element you want from the unit settings section in the building gen window. You can select multiple floor tiles simultaneously and add vertical elements that way as well. You'll see a blue or pink gizmo that indicates the position the selected element will be placed at. If you've placed multiple copies of the wrong element, you can easily replace them as well by multi-selecting, then dragging the element you want from the content manager to the customization section. Here I'm replacing a wall section with some railing. You can also feel free to adjust the scale, rotation, and position of each element manually to allow for a less uniform appearance. Here I'm multi-selecting and scaling some wall sections to form a sort of balcony. We can then also randomly place elements like pillars and child elements like the window interiors without a frame for more variety and creativity. Here, I'm dragging in this window protection grid to the second area on the right to assign it as a child element of our wall section. Once I get it aligned, I can then copy it, select another section of wall, and then paste it. It's also very easy to adjust the material values of all of one element type simultaneously, as they are all linked. Here I have a single floor tile selected, but if I modify any property, like the saturation here, it will transfer to all of the same element types in your building. If you want to adjust values of a certain grouped element individually, be sure to click on the Make Unique button. This allows you to assign separate UV values for element meshes that you may have previously scaled differently. Finally, be sure to get the best lighting for your style, and then you can accessorize your build with various individual props such as vegetation, lanterns, and more. Actor core groups are a great solution to quickly and easily populate your scene and bring it to life. When you're satisfied, you can render an iClone or export everything to a ray traced render environment like Unreal or Omniverse for even more visually stunning results. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.